It was incredible to be able to meet Margie in person and hear about her vision for Dickinson. As soon as you meet her, within three seconds, you know that she is a bundle of energy, as cordial and as conversant as they come. It was uh, very inspiring, exciting to hear her vision. Uh, regarding useful education for the common good, uh, excellent initiative. That phrase alone is one of the reasons I took the Dickinson position, because you can't make up the history. And Dickinson's history is so profound in this country. She's thinking about Dickinson in an intentional way that honors its history, but also looks to the future. It was really refreshing to see the excitement and enthusiasm she has for the Dickinson community, even only having been a part of that community for less than three or four months at this point. My wife was corresponding with her when found out everything she did in Nigeria. That really moved us because we felt that she could recognize what's needed to be successful in terrible times and terrible situations. And if she could do that, she can help America and Dickinson become successful during these times of division and strife. She brings a calming voice. She brings great experience. The students at Dickinson I've taught in four or five classes. They're so engaged. They're so open-minded, which is really important in a time when we live in a period where people aren't questioning each other and aren't able to debate and discuss the hard ideas sometimes with civility and with respect. That's not a Dickinson student. She has the background and the real caring nature and thought processes and analyses behind what she wants to accomplish and what we all want to accomplish for the future. I'm optimistic and, and confident that under her leadership in combination with the, the wonderful components of the Dickinson community that have always existed, that we're going to be you know, positioned strongly to continue to be a useful and relevant liberal arts institution.